Here we are back with the Second World War from 3W. We are entering the fall turn of 1940. I just wanted to um, point out a couple rules which uh, I find odd. However, there may be a reason for it by the designer. But anyway, in combat, when you attack a hex, you have to attack all the units in a hex, um, regardless by whichever unit or units you are attacking with. So I don't understand why an air unit has to attack a naval unit and a ground unit which are defending in the same hex and vice versa. So, I don't see why you can't have multiple targets in a hex when attacked by aircraft. Um, and also, naval units can attack any unit in a hex. Um, let me see here. May attack enemy units in any type of any type in any adjacent hex. Um, I understand what they're saying for, you know, invasions, that type of thing, but I don't know. There's something about that rule which bothers me, but the main rule is the if you declare an attack on a hex, you have to attack every unit in that hex. There's probably a design reason for that, but it doesn't strike me as being realistic. In other words, if I want to use an air unit to simply attack another air unit, um, that should be allowed because otherwise you have, like, you know, a ground unit attacking a hex with an air unit and a fort and stuff. You know, it has to attack all of those together when it would seem logical to me that it is attacking just the fort, the ground unit. Um, and not attacking the air unit unless that's the only unit left in the hex when in, you know during the next turn um, and the same like I said with air air should be allowed I would think to attack specific targets or combine its full strength against all the targets in a hex I guess if you're making a multiple unit attack um, anyway I'm not sure what that's about, but we're going to go ahead and play it pretty much by the rules. Um, so, the Germans get, in this turn, let's go down here, this turn the German units get a 4-8 armor unit, actually two 4-8 armor units, and the Allies get one 210 air unit however I'm also bringing back the <clears throat> expeditionary force British expeditionary force since I'm just assuming that when you remove all the units in the conquered country they're gone and gone for good however it makes more sense to me that you know certain allied units should be able to Oh, say B. Well, no. Anyway, we'll just pretend it's Dunkirk. So, with that, we are going to go into the Axis um, Fall Turn. Okay, here we are at the end of the Axis Movement Phase in the fall of 1940. We're getting ready for Barbarossa at the moment. We've uh, stripped France of most of its units, except uh, an infantry and an air in Paris. The Italians are slowly trying to make their way past this British uh, blockade fleet, and they have picked up... Uh, they can't pick it up unless it starts in the same hex. Next turn, they'll pick up the uh, Italian infantry unit and try to get it down to uh, North Africa. Otherwise, I'm just uh, 
but a bunch of units uh, up here on the um, Soviet uh, border. And I think that's pretty much it. I'm not probably going to attack or declare war on the Soviets at this turn. I probably should have gotten ready for Yugoslavia and the Baltic states. Uh, let's see. They would have got a 1 3 4. Been a 3 4. I could have brought in a. Mm, an infantry and an air or something, we probably could take uh, out Yugoslavia, but winter's coming up, so I think we're just gonna hold, hold in place, and kind of see what uh, the Allied response is. Like I say, they'll get an infantry unit and an air unit next turn, so <clears throat> I'm not quite sure what we're gonna do with them and the rest of their units, but should be a pretty quick Allied turn. Not much of a turn for the Allies. I pretty much just moved this 210, which was up in, had to be placed in London. Just moved it down to Gibraltar. I'm gonna try and get it over to North Africa to help support the Western Desert Force that's there right now. Um, that would give us a three to one. No, not actually, it's only a two. Oh well, anyway, it'll give us some support there in case the Italians do uh, reinforce, get past the British blockade. Other than that, that's pretty much it for fall of 1940. Uh, when I come back, we're going to go ahead and do the winter turn. And we'll see um, if both sides can reinforce and see what else they can do okay here I am back with the 1941 winter turn um, I think I said it was 1940 but the winter turns are always the next year so it's 1941 the Germans received two replacement points of which I used to bring back a unit in Berlin a uh, five strength unit over here and what else did I do? Italy brought back uh, one of their air units that was lost in the battle with the blockading uh, Allied unit, naval unit. Uh, let's see, what else happened? I guess the two big things are both Italy and uh, Germany had the opportunity to roll for allies and Italy rolled for an ally and they got Iraq. Yes, I added Iraq and I got rid of Turkey as a potential Axis ally because doing some reading, Turkey tried to become an ally and then they had a coup or something and they went back to the ally, uh, <laughs> allied side. So, um, But Iraq um, was more of a stable ally, I think, until the British the British landed over there somewhere, and well, the Allies did, and forced it to uh, change back to the Allies. And Germany rolled a two and received Hungary as its ally. Um, let me think. What was I going to say? Oh, um, so that uses up three units on the Alliance. Uh, three die rolls on the alliance table. Um, all of them are even, so Hungary, Spain, and Iraq are no longer counted uh, as a. Uh, if I roll them, they're basically counted as nothing. So that is how the winner shaped up. There were no. There was really nothing else that occurred. The Allies, they received back, what did they receive back? I don't think they had anything lost. I don't think anything was lost on the Allied or Soviet side. No. So that was it for the winter 1941 turn. I think I did make a mistake. I really can't go back and correct it at the moment. 
but I'm not sure on the status of neutrals or allies. Well, I guess they could. I guess they can. If they're allied with the major powers, then they could be used offensively. I thought for a minute that I might have made a mistake with the um, Spain by moving it up and helping attack attack um, a French unit, but I guess they can leave their country in attack. They just uh, run the risk of having their capital taken and uh, um, surrendering. So I'll be able to use Hungary and the unit in Iraq this turn if I so choose. And I think there's several places there that the Iraqi unit can uh, be a benefit. It could move down towards Syria. Syria has their capital, so to speak, here. Palestine is down here, just off camera. But that's pretty far away for them to go adventuring. Kuwait has no city to take, nor does Arabia that I can tell. So they'll probably just sit there and just keep that one victory point. But other than that, that I think is the end of 40 and the beginning of 41. Looks like in the spring of 41 we have quite a few reinforcements coming for <clears throat> Germany and one for the UK and one for the Russian. So we'll see what happens in 1941 spring. Catch you later.